Hello there and welcome back to my channel where I keep on doing these interesting tutorials like the one what we are going to have today. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about one common problem statement that almost every developer has faced while doing their development task and it is about how to create a forms dynamically. So it is a problem statement that you may have encountered uh, that when you have to create the form and there are a bunch of elements in that form and that elements are going to derive depending on some conditions and you are going to get the data for that elements like what are going to be a questions for the form elements what kind of inputs you want to accept if that is going to come dynamically at a runtime or from some external sources or from your back end then you need to have a dynamic form that will help you to solve that form a simple example can be a google form or the microsoft form where we provide uh, what kind of input elements are going to be there whether it's going to be a drop down list what are the options it's going to contain whether it's a yes no choice whether it's a checkbox toggle all that we specify before and that form gets uh, published so this is a similar kind of a mechanism and uh, how we do it in angular that i'm going to tell you so in order to demonstrate this strategy this pattern i want to showcase you a simple form so this is the form that i'm going to develop and it has a bunch of the questions and the input elements i intentionally kept a variety of the input elements like the drop downs the uh, radio buttons the date and the checkbox and just simple input field and this all we are going to show on the ui and this all going to be driven by a json object so the intention is i would get a json object from somewhere from some file or it either can be from any sources but in my case i'm taking it from a file and it has the information about my form like what is the input what the label i want to show what would be the text of the question what are going to be the options input type and all related configuration are present in this json com in this json file so here in rvs code i have just created a new project in angular that is the name of the project is dynamic forms and i don't have anything here it's just a plain structure i have like the components module services however i did one thing which is a setup of the material so i just set up the angular material because i'm going to use the material widgets for my form elements uh, material model using ng add it's very easy you can just refer the documentation or i have a video on it that you also can watch if you're interested so first thing first, I'm going to create a file, namely a uh, form data.json and that I'm going to put in my assets because I want to take uh, data of my form, the configuration of the, my form, input type, their options, their all other configurations. I want to take it from the JSON file. So I'm creating a new file here in my assets, namely form data.json and this is going to be a source of my form related stuff. So let's assume this is the application where user comes and search for the apartment they want to rent it. So I'm going to create a form for searching apartment and it's going to have uh, input elements related to that. So uh, this is what I have prepared. Title of my form is going to be a search apartment. Then there, these fields are the form fields. Uh, then I have put the ID to the each question. Then what is the type of that question? So if you notice the type is varying, I have a type equals to input, then the type equals to select, then type equals to slider, then type as a date, radio. So I intentionally, I purposefully kept the variety of the type because I want to demonstrate to you that uh, how you can accommodate the different types of form field and if you have a need to extend that i'm also going to tell that and uh, then i'm going to create a component and uh, i'm going to call that component as a dynamic form component so i'm just simply creating a component so i'm calling it dynamic form and uh, this will give me a new component here i also need one service and uh, that service i'm going to call a form generator service because the purpose of that service is going to be a uh, get the data from this json file and then convert that into a reactive form object so there we go i have it uh, now i'm going to come to a form generator service and then i'm going to put a logic to convert a json object to a reactive form object so before we start an actual implementation just a reminder or the information to you all the tutorials that i do in my video i provide the source code in the description so in the description you will find the github link of the all the source code so if you have a difficulty understanding anything you can always refer to the source code coming back here so uh, first thing i'm going to create is i'm going to import http client and uh, i'm going to initialize the http client object because i want to read the json file and want to get the json object from it so this is my method for the same get form config json in this i'm getting the assets from data that i have just created a moment back and uh, i'm going to return it and it will be from the observable stream so we are going to create a reactive form in this create form method and uh, we are going to create a new instance of the form group and uh, then this json config we are going to iterate over each of the fields and for each of the fields we are going to add the control because this is how it works in angular we have a form group and inside the form group we have a form control that basically represents the each form elements and the specification so we are also going to need the validators for that elements because uh, we want uh, the validators like in this case I'm, I have put the validator like I want some of the form elements to be 
uh, mandatory i want some answers of the some questions in that form to be mandatory so i'm going to do that uh, but it's not just about the required or the mandatory thing you can extend this validator to anything like you can put an validator for the email can email type of a field you can put your custom regular expression so uh, i will return this form group from this create form and then in the get validators i am going to uh, check the condition that if the field is required then i am going to put a validators dot required as a uh, validation rule there in each of this form control very essential method in this whole use case this is the method which actually handling a part of converting a json object to a form group and then passing that form group to a dynamic forms component so that's it here in the form generator service now we are going to switch to our dynamic forms component and as you can see i don't have anything in the dynamic forms component because i just freshly created it so uh, what we want to do is we want to accept a json config in the dynamic form via a input decorator so i have an input decorator uh, which basically accept the json config and then i have a form which is going to be of a form group so i'll simply import these two uh, from the angular core so this means this dynamic forms component is expecting a json config so i need to pass that from its parent component so let's put a selector tag of our dynamic forms component in the app component html so that it is present in the dom so uh, i'll simply put app dynamic form and uh, json config is the json object that i want to pass to my uh, component and that i will pass from the form json config uh, so one thing that you need to do is here you have to check that the form json config has a value because if we simply pass a form json config initially it is going to be undefined uh, and uh, your app dynamic form will fail to render that so the very reason is this form json config we are getting it from the json file and that is over the http call so it is asynchronous that means that initially it's not going to have value and when the file is read by the uh, service then only we are going to have value into this form json config so in the controller of our app component we are going to define the variable for the form json config which is our json object so i'm using this inject function from the angular code to uh, get the dependency injected of the form generator service in my app component so in the ng on it i'm going to call the get form config json so this is going to get me the config json which i have here so it's going to provide me the config json file and uh, after getting that config json file i'm going to subscribe to it and uh, this will return me a form config json that i'm going to assign to uh, my local form json config so uh, let's inject the form generator service in our constructor and uh, in the ng on init this is the uh, important line here what we are doing here is we are assigning the form generated create form like the create form method returns us the uh, form group that we are assigning to the form group which is the local variable form here in the dynamic form so let's import this form generator service to get rid of this error and uh, now we have to do a lot of work here in this dynamic forms view so uh, basically we have to write a code that will handle all types of the form fields we will simply put a ng switch there uh, which will be taking care of whether the field is of the type this then you have to render this kind of a ui you have to render this kind of a material widgets you have to render this kind of a form elements you have to show this kind of a form fields warning to you you may feel this dynamic form component html little overwhelming because they're going to be a little complicated code and uh, in terms of line of code also it's a little big uh, but the whole intention of this dynamic form is to give a support to a different types of form elements so that it will be rendered depending on the value present in the json config uh, conditions and the checks so uh, first thing we are going to create a container because i want to put a css to it and I want to align it centrally then uh, comes my form container and uh, then I have the title of my form that as you can see I'm directly getting it from the JSON object uh, that will come from the JSON form uh, then comes the actual guy here which is the form so I have the form tag and inside that form group and the ng submit I have the on submit method so let me put that on submit in my uh, dynamic forms component and the purpose of on submit is when I will submit this form the entire data of the forms fields like the form control all that i want to just uh, console log here so we are going to stick with the uh, all the concept of the reactive form and going to create our uh, logic that will support all the different kinds of uh, input fields so inside that i have a ng container and uh, that ng container is basically will be in the iteration because i have a ng4 and uh, this will run on each of the individual fields in the json object and uh, inside that ng container i'm going to check that uh, what is the type what is the input type if it is of this input uh, if it is of the date if it is of the checkbox or the radio whatever then i'm going to execute a specific line of uh, html code there all those things ultimately gets binded to my form group and i can access a data in a single go and this also helps me putting the validators for each of the individual form elements so 
I have a big ng switch here and inside that I'm going to have the input field, select field, checkbox, slider, date, uh, picker, then the radio field and this is not just this much you can extend to uh, whatever you want. So input kind of a question I'm just simply going to have an input tag with a form control name uh, assigned by the form control name which is going to have a value of the id so that is the purpose of the id that I'm putting in my form data. Uh, this id whatever I have put here in each of the question that is directly getting binded to my form control name. Uh, then similarly for the select field I have a mat select here and then the mat option I'm simply reading that from the field option so as you can see in my form data .json, if my input type is of the select then I have the options array inside that I have provided the options here. Then let's see how it will accommodate the checkboxes. So for the checkboxes it's pretty simple we have only one mat checkbox. For the slider we need a max and the mean value uh, and uh, step also so in my case I'm using the slider for one of my question which is how much is your budget and uh, I will get that mean and max value directly from my form data. Then comes a date picker so for date picker uh, we have a mat date picker and I have referred the angular material documentation to write this uh, code for the mat date picker. Then comes a radio field so for the radio fields we also need an option so the similar like the select box radio button going to read the options from the JSON config and uh, then you can add whatever n number of input fields you want to add in your form and if you want to extend this you can simply add the support for that fields here uh, just below this line and uh, it will start supporting that and then finally comes my submit button uh, so i think we have everything and uh, if we go to a browser i can see that uh, form is displayed there but i don't have my css applied yet so i'll come to my code and uh, we'll apply some css so that it will look nicer so as i was saying i need a container uh, which will be displaying my form into a center so that's why i have a justify content center line item center and a background color of my choice then the form container i am putting a height as a hundredth of the viewport the hundredth percentage of the current viewport height uh, background color white and then the each form element I want to keep a maximum width of 80% Then the submit button I want to show it in a blue color and the text color will be white then my form uh, title will be centrally aligned and then I have this alert box so with this my form will look nicer uh, now uh, as you can see that uh, there is this validator coming into a picture which I'll talk about in a moment but before that I want to show that my form is working and uh, it will log a data to a console so I'll provide some data here uh, let's say my city is Munich. I want a two rooms apartment. My budget is 950 euro. Let's say uh, then uh, then the, my moving date I will be tentatively go to 18th of October. I want a furnished apartment. I have a paid okay and I will submit it and you can see that all the responses of our questions of our forms are uh, recorded and uh, they are console logged in here so I can see the all the outputs that I put are correctly logged here uh, there is this alert text which says that please answer mandatory question so this is working because of our validator so I have put a simple check in my code as you can see here that if my form is invalid then I'm showing this alert text and uh, this invalid form is basically decided based on the validators of each of the input field so in my case i put the validator as each of the fields should be required which are required and that are coming from my uh, json configuration but uh, you can extend this validator to uh, any extent and uh, that basically is happening in our form generator service here where i uh, have defined the validators and uh, form dot invalid is the object that uh, implicitly contains a value about whether the form is valid or not uh, so yeah with that you can uh, extend to validators to it so that's all for the demo in this video i thought to make this video because this is a very common pattern and uh, and it is very instrumental in the cases where we have to decide the form elements and uh, it also ensures that uh, we follow all the angular standard practices like the use of the reactive forms in a proper way constructing the form group and the form control along with the validators i kept the maintainability and the extensibility uh, at the center because i wanted to make this approach to be extendable to uh, any new uh, requirement or you want like for example you are going to add any new fields then it has to be a very minimum changes that you do in your dynamic component and the code also need to be a maintainable and a clean without any too clutter and uh, you don't want to write something that is very difficult to understand so if you find this video useful at all give it a like and thank you for watching